Today, we're going to be unboxing and flushing the AlphaCool ST30 240mm radiator. Stay tuned. Today, we're taking a look at ST30 240mm radiator. Going to be water cooling my computer soon, so we're going to have a lot of content coming up here that's going to be going over a lot of the components that I'm going to be using. So this one right here, this is a 240 millimeter radiator. 240 indicates that it fits 220 millimeter fans, and it's 30 millimeters thick. So let's take a look at what we got inside. So inside, it's packed real well. It's got foam on both sides. The radiator itself is wrapped in bubble wrap. So let's pull it out here. All right, and there we go. We have a radiator. Um, one of the features I really like about this radiator that I noticed right away is underneath all the screw holes, it actually has a little plate to stop you from long screwing the radiator where you actually screw in a screw that's longer than you need it actually goes into the fins well this one actually has a little plate there to block it so that can't happen um, other than that it's a really nice high quality radiator really like it and today i'm going to show you how to clean this radiator out so let's go through what else we have in the box and then we'll get to cleaning the radiator so we have a little accessory pack that comes in here so if we look in here the accessories that it comes with are we have a little bag here with a bunch of five millimeter screws and an Allen wrench. Then we have two bags of 30 millimeter screws and two bags of 35 millimeter screws. And then we have a bag of spare parts. It looks like we've got two 35 millimeter, two five millimeter, and two 30 millimeters. So just in case you drop a screw under your table, then you have some extras. Lastly, in the box, we have some paperwork here. We have, it looks like, instructions. So this right here shows you which screws to use in which conditions. That about does it for the unboxing. Let's get to cleaning the radiator out. There's a few things you're gonna need to get started. So the first thing is gonna be, you're gonna need yourself a glass measuring cup. Make sure you use a glass one and not a plastic one because we're going to be using this in the microwave. So the next thing we're going to need is some distilled water. Make sure you use distilled water. You don't want to use regular tap water inside of your radiator. And then we're going to use some distilled vinegar. And we're not going to use a lot of this, just a little bit, but it's acidic and it'll help us clean up all the, loosen up all the particles that are left over inside of the radiator. And then we have a clean white bowl. And honestly, this, is, this isn't necessary. You can use any bowl. This is just to drain the radiator afterwards. And we're using white so we can kind of see what comes out of the radiator. So it's better to have something in a contrasting color. Then you're gonna need some G1 quarter O-ring caps so you can plug the radiator off because we're gonna need to shake it around and we don't want water splashing everywhere. And then, you're gonna need yourself a funnel. I got these at the local hardware store, but I would try to find something like this. These are perfect. They fit inside the radiator and they're really small. So I got a couple different sizes here. So I didn't know for sure which one I was gonna use. So I got them both here and we'll decide once we start pouring water into the radiator, which one we're gonna use. So, all right. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to fill this measuring cup up about halfway. We're gonna to go to roughly one cup to one and a third, um, depending on what size you use. This is a two cup measuring cup, so I'm gonna fill it up about halfway. And then we're gonna put it in the microwave for two minutes. After we've heated it up, then we're gonna add just a little bit of distilled vinegar, and we're gonna pour that into the radiator. So now, let's go and fill this up real quick.
All right, and we're back. We have our hot water and vinegar solution here, and we're gonna get ready to pour it into our radiator. First thing we need to do is take off these little rubber protective caps here, and then we're gonna grab one of our funnels, and with these, we're gonna slowly pour this solution into the radiator. I'm gonna switch back and forth to each side until I fill the entire, both chambers up. Basically, the way this works is the water goes in one side, goes all the way to the bottom, it turns around and then it comes back in the other side. So I'm gonna put water in both sides to kind of evenly fill it up. And as you can see right here, I actually have the radiator elevated at the side that has the ports on it so we don't overfill it. And then I have a towel here on the bench just in case I do spill something. So let's get to it. So we're gonna start filling this thing up. We want to go really slow here because we really don't want to overfill it and make a mess. It's not going to hurt anything if you do overfill it, but, um, oh, see, just like that, but it will make a mess and, you know, that's never fun. All right, and that's it. It doesn't take much to fill these radiators up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my caps now and I'm going to cap this thing off here and make sure you tighten these things down so they don't leak. All right. So now that we have that done, I'm going to wipe off some of the excess and make sure everything's not leaking. All right, we're good. All right, so now what we're gonna to wanna to do with this radiator is we're actually gonna to wanna to shake it really good. And we wanna make sure to slosh that around. The water's actually really warm, so the radiator itself is actually really warm too. So if you need to put some gloves on, um, I wouldn't blame you. All right, now that we've shaken it really good, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this thing sit for about 10 minutes. And I'll be back. 11 minutes later. All right, and we're back. And it's been 10 minutes. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull these caps off now. And we're gonna drain the radiator into this white bowl so we can kinda take a look at what kind of debris we broke loose here. So, get these caps off now. And with the caps off, we want to be real careful not to um, dump this thing anywhere but the bowl. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dump it out here. And the first time you do this is going to be the worst. And... We got all kinds of junk out of here. Let me show you what came out. All right, so this is why we clean the radiator out. If you take a look in here, look at all that junk that was inside of there. There's like a really big piece that was in there too. Check that out. This is the kind of stuff you don't want going through your loop. So this is why we clean the radiator out. Now that we have the radiator completely drained out. We need to repeat this process four times. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. Much, much, much later. All right, we've let the radiator flush with our solution four times and we waited 10 minutes between each time and we're on the last one now. So we're going to empty the radiator out now. So I'm going to prop it up and pull the caps off so I don't make a mess. And then we're going to take a look at how much garbage we got out of this thing. All right, I've been collecting all of the solution each time in this bucket, so we'll be able to see everything that we pulled out of the radiator. All 
All right, what we want to do is kind of get as much of the water out as we possibly can. All right, there we go. And now let's take a look at what we got out. All right, here's our solution from four different times going through the radiator. And as you can see, we got quite a bit in there. Let me see if I can get it all to be in one pile here. Kind of see it all right there. Still got that one big chunk we got out the first time. And then we got all of that right there. So this here, this is why you want to flush your radiator before you install it. Because otherwise, all of this debris would actually have gone through your entire loop and into your water block and everything else. Okay, now the final step, we want to make sure to flush all the vinegar out of the system. We don't want to have any vinegar left over inside of here because vinegar is acidic. And we don't want it eating up at fittings and our water block and things of that nature. So what we're going to do is I've already cleaned out our measuring cup off camera. I did this after I did the fourth flush. And so I've cleaned it and dried it. So now what we're going to do is we don't need to heat this water up. All we need to do is take just regular cold distilled water and we're going to pour it into our measuring cup. And then we're going to run this through the radiator the same way we did before. So we're going to use our funnel and we're going to fill the radiator up. So let's go ahead and do that now. So just like we did before, we want to be really careful not to overfill it. And it doesn't take much water to fill this thing up. And there we go. So far, I've overfilled it and made a mess four out of the five times I've done it now. So, you know, you do your best, but yeah, you do what you do. So what I'm going to do is we want to flush this thing out three times to make sure we get it as clean as possible. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back. Many, many minutes later. All right. And we're back. I just finished three rounds of rinsing this whole radiator out and we shouldn't have any remaining vinegar in it now. So what I would do at this point is, unless you're gonna install it in your computer immediately, I would put some caps back on it just to avoid any debris getting back into the radiator until you're gonna use it. Now, since I don't have all the parts yet to do my system, we're gonna um, put this away until later. Hopefully next week, I'll be getting the rest of the parts in from EK so we can actually get the water cooling itself done. All radiators on the market are going to have some debris left in it, left over from the manufacturing process. The manufacturer does the best that they can to clean these things, but it's still a good idea to clean them yourself when you get them. Um, just mm -hmm. look at what we got out of it. I mean, you don't want that running through your system. So. Please like this video if it was helpful to you. And if this kind of content interests you, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. Thanks again.